clear smugglers, be warned, you have a tough enemy. In Ispra, Italy, the European Commission's Institute for Transuranium Elements teaches frontline staff and customs officers how to confound you. In this training session, a car is monitored for radioactive material. Detection of nuclear material and radioactive sources at borders is essential to ensure that such materials do not fall into the hands of terrorist groups or criminal organisations. But the success of the fight depends on the way frontline officers carry out the controls. The detection equipment is usually run by non-technical people. ITU provides training for appropriate handling of illicit incidents with realistic smuggling scenarios and real nuclear materials. The major problem that uh, the frontline officers have to face in this case is to be able to discriminate between a real case of smuggling of illicit uh, material towards, uh, let's say, ordinary radiation coming from material of common use in transport that can be fertilizer, marble, ceramic, or whatsoever, that also contain radioactive material naturally, and this is not a criminal case. One of the ruses in vogue among smugglers involves masking the presence of illicit material with some natural source of radiation. C'è un picco qua, eh? C'è qualcosa? ITU's answer has been to exploit the portal response to discriminate alarms triggered by naturally radioactive sources, thus helping to detect illicit material such as this cobalt seizure. In the scenario that we have uh, simulated, we reproduce a case of a smuggler that has hidden a radioactive source inside a transport of fertilizer. Fertilizer can trigger an alarm due to the presence of uh, natural potassium-40. In our case, we have been able to detect the presence of the hidden source, either analyzing the profile of the radiation signature when the car is passing that points that the, the maximum of the radiation is close to the driver and not in the rear, as it would be in case of transport of fertilizer. And afterwards, with the handheld detector, where we have been able to identify the presence of cobalt-60, which was not supposed to be there. ITU organizes some 20 training sessions each year, both in its ISPRA and Karlsruhe facilities, including hands-on training on radiological crime scenes. In a sense, ITU is a, is a unique place and it offers fantastic training opportunities because we have a wide selection of nuclear materials which people can really handle and put their hands on, measure it, detect it and practice things which they can't practice with the same material in any other place. Today's scenario, the discovery of an attempt to build a nuclear handmade explosive. Trainees from all over the world are taught how to face challenges they don't encounter anywhere else. They learn how to communicate, how to interact, how to agree on common protocols to properly handle such an incident. This is an example uh, of a contaminated crime scene where a team uh, from experts, both of the forensic and the radiological people, work together to uh, identify radioactive sources and uh, contaminated evidence and to properly remove them from the crime scene for further processing in a nuclear forensic laboratory. Preserving the conventional chain of evidence while dealing with radioactive samples can be problematic. For example, lifting fingerprints from a sample is not compatible with taking a swipe for radioactive contamination. However, ITU has succeeded in making the first ever identification of a fingerprint on a radio-contaminated object. ITU's successes and increasing demand for training has convinced the European Union to invest in a new training centre at Karlsruhe. Beyond nuclear training, ITU seeks to disseminate information to students and young scientists to increase their awareness in the nuclear field. 
I did my PhD thesis at CNRS in Orléans and I chose to develop my post-thesis work here in the Institute for Trans-Uranium Elements to have access to the ORMN, which is an absolute unique device in the world. ITU organises international summer schools on basic actinide research. Afterwards, some students remain on board. For me, it is great to work here with a, to have these uranium-230, which has a half-life of 20 days, to investigate it to be, it is more or less still at the start of the investigation, but uh, I am proud to be involved in the investigation if this uranium-230 is really suitable for its use in the medical application. The ITU training and education program aims to promote the growth and strengthening of essential knowledge-based expertise. As the students say, welcome to the nuclear open source.